Welcome to the back room. Today I have another episode of Mindustry Schematics. Today we'll be looking at phase fabric schematics specifically. I don't have as many of these, so hopefully this isn't too long, but it is an important material, so let's go ahead and get started. This first one here I have is called D Phase Fabric. Uh, when I was looking through all the options for the ones I liked and which ones I thought would be good to look at, this one popped out as one that solves a problem that you often have with phase fabric. Phase fabric requires two sand to one thorium. And so you often have a hard time getting that to, to get in there fast enough. Well, what we can do here is by using two plastanium conveyor belts, you can feed in your materials and keep them separate and pull in your thorium and your sand as they go by and then feed out your phase fabric on the right hand side. The nice thing about this is you can chain this going vertically and you can generate quite a bit of phase fabric in a pretty simple idea. Um, so this one, I think this one's a pretty good one. So let's go ahead and give this one either an A or a B. I, I, it's not my favorite, but I, I like the idea of it. It's not as compact as some others that you could do. I'll probably give it to B, but I think it's a, it's a good solid entry. The next one here is the, the typical two by two pattern you guys are familiar with. This one, you can feed in your materials from any direction, just like any of my other versions. Um, and then you feed out the, the face fabric out the bottom. So this particular design, I am not as excited about as some of the other materials. And I'll explain why. I'm going to give this an A tier instead of an S tier. Most of the time I give my two by two designs an S tier. But in this case, there's a problem with uh, materials that you have to have two sand and one, or no, it's not two sand. It's 10 sand and 4 thorium. That's 14 materials to be able to go through this. And each of these unloaders can only unload 11 materials a second. So you get the, you see the problem here. There's just not enough speed there to be able to move the material around enough. So oftentimes what I'll do is I'll actually do two conveyor belts of sand and one of thorium. And I'll have two in, you know, generally I have one sand in one side and one sand in another. And it can, can uh, they, they can help by uh, using the two, the fact that one can send and one can receive uh, in the other directions, and that helps. It's not, I'm not quite satisfied fully with it. I think this works as far as it does generate power, or just, sorry, it does generate phase fabric, uh, and works pretty good, works in the other design, works in that paradigm, um, but I think there's probably, there might be a better solution out there. So I'm going to give this one an A tier. All right, moving on to this one. So here's phase, fab fa phase fabric chain. This uses the same idea that we've seen at the beginning of the game where you just use these uh, overflow junctions and uh, overflow in the junction uh, items here to feed it through. You do need two sand, so I have that represented here. Uh, this is similar to a, uh, you can do the same idea with a pyrotite design and you can chain this to the right hand side or flip it uh, up vertically. Uh, so it's a good design. Um, by the end of the game, usually you have better designs than this. It's a solid entry, <clears throat> but it's not one you probably would use very often. So I'm gonna give it a C. Uh, in, in general. All right, this next one, you have a phase fabric factory. This one, you have two conveyor belts that are plastanium that pull in your sand and your thorium. It chains going up vertically. Uh, it unloads from there and then feeds out the result going down on the right hand side. Um, your power node here is going to be a little bit small. I don't know if it's going to reach all of these. It might. This one up here is the one I'm concerned about, but it might reach up there. Um, so you might need a couple more power nodes uh, for this to fully function. Uh, it's a solid entry. If you need, what is this, seven phase factory, you can go ahead and put those down. Um, I, though my two by two grid, you can get more in less space. So this one's not quite as functional as that. I'll probably give it a C tier uh, because it's it's going to be uh, a little bit harder to chain multiple of these. And uh, I'm, I'm not exactly happy with how wide it is. Moving on to the next one here. This is another one of my designs. It's phase fabric from conveyor. Uh, the idea here is you have a conveyor belt here that holds sand and thorium that goes back to your base or some other place that it can uh, be used. Uh, and then you unload it into your phase fabric fabricator. And then it unload, and then once it's done, it loads it back onto the conveyor belt. And that's why I need to say it needs to go back to your core for this to be out of function. Now, this is not a great way to get a lot of it. I mean, you can you can put these all the way along the conveyor belt back to your base. Now, the only thing you can put on the conveyor belt is sand and thorium, which is why it's not the most useful. But it is helpful if you need to get a little thorium and you or not a little thorium, a little phase fabric, and you don't have 
um, the space or you don't want to take the time to set up a, a full on setup there. Um, you, you might also wonder, well, why would you ever use this one? Uh, when would you have this case? Well, if you put this on a the output of a uh, disassembler that is being fed scrap that will break up materials into sand, thorium, graphite, and uh, titanium, this one you can grab two of those resources and feed the graphite and thorium or graphite and titanium back to the core while also providing phase fabric. So uh, there are cases where this is very useful. Um, I'll give it probably. Um, a C. I would use this. I'm torn between a B and a C. I, I don't use this a ton, but in combination with a different schematic, this can be very helpful to clean up some of the material that you don't want on there um, and feed just the um, face fabric, graphite, and titanium back to the core. All right, moving on to the next one. We have face fabric times two. This one is similar to this one we had here on, that was a B. This one I actually didn't like. I included this one because if you look at this and I ask the question, where does the face fabric go? You might look at this and be like, okay, yeah, there isn't a way for the face fabric to go. You have your sand coming in on the left-hand side, titanium, uh, the thorium coming on the right-hand side, and then has a way to cross and feed those materials to the other side. But then your face fabric is going to go out the bottom or the top or into these junctions because there's nothing stopping the face fabric from going back left into this junction. Only way that the only thing that's going to stop it is a float constant flow to the right, but there's there's nothing saying you can't go back left. And so the problem with that is this will jam. Uh, I'm going to give this one an F. Yeah, you got to make sure you have a way for all of your materials to go and make sure that it doesn't jam. Hello, this is editing me. I just wanted to put a correction here that this phase fabric times two is not an F tier. It does actually work. I was testing it and it seems to work just fine. It doesn't jam. Uh, it does need a little bit more material as you get near the end. However, it's probably somewhere around a, a B tier. So uh, much better than I originally gave it. With that being said, we'll go back to the rest of the tier list. Next one here, we have phase fabric times 24 boosted. I saw this one and was like, I'm going to include this one just as an example of somebody really likes phase fabric. Um, <laughs> there's so much phase fabric being generated here. So you've got your sand coming in on a conveyor belt on the left and on the right, phase fabric in the middle, and you just flow all that material up. You have these bridges that are feeding the materials across to the other sides, and you have these, uh, what are these called? Mass projector, mass thrower, I forget what they're called, um, that you can use to eject all of your material or put more in. It looks like actually you would have your sand coming into one of these, uh, and your sand coming into that one, and your thorium coming to this one, because you notice that these conveyor belts actually flow up and down rather than all the way down on one side. So this then depend the speed of this depends on how many other mass projectors you have shooting at these ones. So you'd have to have a lot of them firing into here to then produce all of this. And then the material has to go out somewhere. And just looking at this, I'm not quite sure where the material is gonna go, honestly. Um, because there's no way, I guess, get out of here. I mean, maybe it goes up these these columns here and feeds its way. Yeah, actually, that's what it is. It, it feeds out of these here up and then out the top where these junctions are. And then down here, looks like it feeds up as well. So it comes out the top of these right above these junctions. So, all right, feedback on this one. I think mass projectors, I've had mixed problems with that. So if you feed in just sand, this will work. If you didn't just store them here, you never want to mix them. And they didn't mix them, so that's good. Uh, but then the nice thing about these is you can have multiple, like four or five shoot other mass projectors shooting at this one. And so you can get a lot of material in. These unload very quickly. And so this probably will work pretty good because it can unload on the conveyor belt as well as directly into these two factories right next to it. Um, it's an interesting idea. Um, if I really need this much fave fabric, I might give it a try. Uh, so I'll give this one a B. I think it's an interesting option for producing a lot of face fabric. Um, okay, let's go on to the next one. Next one here we have Plague C3, CE3 ASE. Uh, I included this one because in other videos I've included options where you have your uh, core or a vault that you're working out of to produce your, your face fabric or, or your material specifically, any type of material. 
And in this one, you're pulling your materials out from the center and feeding it out to the different factories. And yeah, I, I, you know, as I look at these, I wonder, I haven't run these in the co or in the game. And I'm wondering if these, these devices here are used to run, um, units to then pick up the material out of the center of this and haul it back and maybe even use units to load into the center of this. So that might be what's going on here. Maybe I need to take a little time and, and try one of these out. So this looks like a very nice compact way to load all the material in. I'm just going to assume that it works because somebody put it on there. Um, but uh, I'm going to give this one a, a B or a C, probably a B. I think it's kind of a cool idea. If the programming works and you can use units to, to run this, then why not? Okay, notice that in this one, I didn't actually include an S tier. The closest I have is this phase fabric two by two. This one's a hard one to make because there's you have to have 14 material to get one of these phase fabric fabricators to actually work. That's a lot of material. And so it's really hard to have a great one of these. So the, this phase fabric, D phase fabric is, is one that I might try, but it's not terribly compact. It's not as compact as the two by two. Maybe we'll get an S tier at some point, but for now we've just have these eight designs that I thought were worth mentioning today. Well, that's all I have. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please take a little bit of time and like and subscribe. If you've, if you've watched enough of these videos, by this point you've gotten to Phase Fabric. Um, I haven't, you know, tried to push the, the channel a lot, but I'd enjoy it if, and appreciate it if, if people uh, were able to comment and, and subscribe to the channel. And if you appreciate these videos, give, uh, give me a little moment of your time. Anyway, thank you for watching. I'll see you.